Thank you all. This uh, presentation is based on work that we do in the Nordic HPSC group, so it's uh, on behalf of the group that I'm uh, making this presentation. And we're not going to talk about inequality, but we're going to talk about differences between the Nordic countries and differences by age and gender. And in the Nordic countries, all Nordic countries have actually, over the last 10, 15 years, been intensely worried about uh, the um, mental health problems among young people. And uh, what we were asked to do two years ago uh, by the Nordic Welfare Center was to look into the mental health uh, development over time in the Nordic countries and to see when we look at, at it with comparable data across the countries, do we actually find a decline in mental health among young people in the Nordic country, countries. And um, we have we decided to consider both adverse outcomes, sort of health problems, uh, and some positive indicators, some of the positive end uh, points, and then some associated factors. And I'm going to show you an immense, uh, enormous amount of tables, but I hope I do it in a pedagogical way so that you can understand and follow the story we want to tell you. The HBSC study is a study of 11, 13 and 15 year old uh, children and the study has been conducted repeatedly every four years since uh, 1984 and the most recent data are from this year but they're not quite finished uh, and not ready for analysis so we've been looking at um, data over 12 years from 2002 to 2014 and the HBSC study is an international study of 43 countries and um, and we are just sort of a small corner of it, but because we're comparable in all these different ways that we've already talked about, it makes sense for us to look at our systems and our youth as a whole and, uh, and compare among us. And the questionnaire is based, uh, or the data are based on anonymous questionnaires that are filled out in a school, out, in, in a school uh, lesson. And um, yeah. And the things that we are looking at is also school pressure and relation to parents as the associated factors. The first thing we want to, to look at was health complaints. That's, that's a traditional sort of health measure among children. We have an eight point scale or a, a, a scale with eight different uh, symptoms. And uh, in this uh, presentation and in the paper that we're writing for the Nordic Welfare um, Journal, um, we look at seven of them together because we look at sleep difficulties as, as a problem on its own because that has had increasing sort of uh, interest um, internationally. So we look at these uh, seven health complaints complaints and ask how often um, within the last six months have you had one of these uh, problems and then the kids can answer every day about every day uh, to rarely and never and we look at two or more health complaints at least weekly. That's the group that I'm now going to present data from and it looks like this which is sort of not when we look at it from a scale from zero to hundred it doesn't look like there are very large differences but if we take a closer look and look at a scale from 10 to 35, we see that there are actually different things going on in the Nordic countries if we look at uh, Iceland here on top and to Denmark here at the bottom. So I try to, to take out some of the developments and see there are two countries, Iceland and Sweden, that shows that in 2002 they had quite, quite high prevalence of health complaints and then there was a decline over time and then again an increase from 2010 to 2014. So what is this a reflection of? And then we look at each country on its own. Here it's Iceland. And as you can see on a scale from 10 to 60, that the variation within Iceland is much larger than the variation across countries when we look at country level numbers. And I want to go through this just in detail. You have the years here, the four different years that we follow. And then for this is 15 year old girls, 13 year old girls and 11 year old girls. So the dotted lines are girls. These are 15-year-old boys, 13-year-old boys, and 11-year-old uh, boys. And what you see here is that there are not very big differences uh, among boys, but there are very large age differences among girls, and that it's the 15-year-old girls that have the highest prevalence um, over the, the years 2006 to 2014, where Iceland was uh, part of the study. And you can also see that the, the U-shape sort of is present in most of the age groups. So this picture is a picture of uh, the youth and not just one group that sort of drives this difference. 
And when you look at the health complaints in Sweden, again, you see that you have the 15-year-old girls on top, much higher prevalence, a sort of more than, more than double as high prevalence as the lowest group, which is 11-year-old boys. And for all, both boys and girls, you see that the 15-year-olds have a higher prevalence than the 11-year-olds. In the countries, Denmark and Finland, you don't see much happening over this 12-year uh, period. And for both Finland and Denmark, you can see that that goes for, for all age groups and both sexes. But again, you see the, the very clear picture of boys being on the bottom, girls being on top, and especially the 15-year-old girls. Um, also here, the ones that have the highest, absolute high prevalence, and the 11-year-old boys with the absolute lowest prevalence. In Denmark, the same picture. Although the 15-year-old girls move a bit here, you see that the age differences are uh, those that explain most. And there is an increase for the 15-year-old girls from 2010 to 14, but there is a decline here, which means that it, when we look at it as a whole, it looks like nothing is happening, although something is happening. For the girls, there is actually an Im increase from 2010 to 14. So we need not only to look at the countries on their own, but we need to look at the different age and, and uh, gender groups if we want to understand what's going on in the countries. Issues. In Norway, we see a different picture. This is the only country where there's actually a decline when we look from 2002 to 2014 in the, in the prevalence of two or more uh, weekly health complaints. And what we, think, what we see is that that decline actually comes uh, after a decline uh, from 2002 to 2006, there's an increase and then there's a decline. Um, but what drives most of the decline is the 11-year-old boys and girls. Those are the ones that have a decline in the, in the prevalence level. While actually, if you look again at the 15-year-old girls, there's an increase in their symptom level. So, to conclude, we find that every third girl and boy in, or every third adolescent in Iceland and Sweden had two or more health complaints weekly in 2014 and that it was the case for every fourth adolescent in Finland, Norway and Denmark. And in all countries you see the same patterns, girls have much higher prevalences than boys and there's a very strong age association for girls, not so strong for boys but still with those that are oldest at the highest risk. And there are increasing prevalences uh, for the oldest girls in Denmark, Norway and Sweden. And there is a U-shaped development uh, for Iceland uh, from 2006 uh, to 2014. And remember that U-shape because that's uh, something that we will, uh, you might look at in the other figures as well. Norway is the only country with an overall positive development from 2002 to 2014, and the only group in Norway that didn't develop positively was 15-year-old girls. That was the first symptom, first health outcome. The other health outcome we want to look at is sleep difficulties, and we asked the kids, how often have you experienced the following symptoms in the last six months, as part of that list that the other symptoms came from, and one of those questions uh, was difficulties in getting to sleep. And uh, we look at now the group that answered about every day, more than once a week, had they trouble, difficulties, falling asleep. And looking at the overall scheme, not much going on. It's between uh, 10 and 30 percent. But looking at taking a closer look again, we see that there are differences. That we have Finland in the bottom, we have Denmark at the top, and there are something going on in some other countries. Again, Iceland and Sweden showing a development that looks a bit like each other. It goes down in the uh, initial phase and then a very steep uh, increase from 2010 to 2014. And if we look at Iceland separately, we see that this figure, except for the 15-year-old boys, that development uh, is true for all age groups and, and both genders. And for everyone except the 15-year-old boys, there's a very steep increase in sleep difficulties from 2010 to 2014. 
In Sweden, the pattern is a bit odd for the 15-year-old uh, girls. I've checked it several times, it looks like that. But you see for all the others that it's actually a reflection of uh, the same shape, that there was a decline in sleep difficulties and then a sharp increase from 2010 to 2014. In Denmark and Finland, there was a subtle sort of increase when we look at it as a country uh, level. And that increase is very much driven by the girls, as you see in Finland, uh, with again with the 15-year-old uh, girls and the 13-year-old girls higher than, than the boys and with the age differences more uh, distinct for girls than for boys. And again, Norway, there was an increase in sleep difficulties from 2002 to 2010, but from 2010 to 2014, we see a decrease in sleep difficulties, uh, sleep problems. And that uh, decrease is found in all age groups and both gender. So it goes a bit up and down here for girls, but, but the last sort of figures here, um, we see that, that there's a consistent pattern of a decreasing uh, level of sleep problems in uh, Norway. So summing up, on Norway, we can con or on, on these numbers, we can conclude that in 2014, the highest prevalence of sleep uh, problems um, were in Sweden, which had um, almost 31, um, the, with a prevalence of almost 31, while the lowest was in Norway, so it's almost a double uh, prevalence from Norway to Sweden. And in all countries, girls had higher prevalences. And there was an increasing prevalence found in four of the Nordic countries, and Norway as the only country again showing a positive development uh, in prevalence of sleep difficult, uh, difficulties with a decline, except for their 15 year old girls. Self-rated health, the last uh, health measure I want to present for you, but we'll do it in a different way because now we want to look at the group that has an excellent health because we talk about problems all the time and in mental health we want to look at some of the positive indicators. We don't have any separate, so if we, is it so that there might be more problems in one group but also a group that becomes stronger and does better? So we wanted to look at that. So we look at those that have an excellent self-rated health. And we skip the big pattern and show that there are actually big differences. Again, a 15 to 20 percent uh, prevalence difference in the Nordic countries, Sweden on top, uh, a lot of Swedish youth with excellent um, self-rated health, uh, but a sharp decline from 2010 to 2014. Again, we look at those developments and what drives the the change in, in Sweden from 2010 to 2014. Well, that does a change that goes on among both, both boys and girls uh, and among all age groups. Again, you can see that the 15-year-old girls are the ones that have the most, uh, the lowest prevalence of excellent self-rated health. So not only have they more dif sleep difficulties, more symptoms, but they also have a low lower prevalence of excellent self-rated health. And again, you see the boy, the 11-year-old uh, uh, boys, as those that have the most positive um, development. But the changes are driven by all age groups. If we look at some of those that goes a bit up and down and not with a very clear pattern, we see the same pattern as we do in Sweden, that we have the the 15-year-old girls with the lowest um, self-rated health, the 11-year-old boys with the highest, and it looks sort of the development is not very different in any of the age or gender groups. Again, Norway, the only country that seems to have a positive development, self-rated health. And what drives that positive de well development? Well, you see the 11-year-old boys, not much at stake. 13-year-old boys, not much difference. A bit of difference among the 15-year-old boys. But what drives the difference in excellent self-rated health is actually that the girls have had an improvement in their self-rated health over time, which is a very happy uh, result, I think, because those are the ones that are at the bottom. So Norway, for some, by some way, have been able to increase the level of excellent self-rated health among their girls um, over those 12 years. So altogether, there have been small improvements if we look at it as an overall pattern between 2002 and 2006 and then a rather stable um, 
period since then. Sweden showed negative development, Norway showed a positive development, and there's a strong association uh, with age for girls. And life satisfaction is another positive um, factor that we want to look at, at the same way that we look at those that have the best possible life. Adolescents, when they answer, they have um, a ladder of 11 steps, and if they answer 9 to 10, they're close to have the best possible life. So those are the ones that we look at here. Again, goes up and down, a little bit different patterns in some countries in Sweden and Iceland again. There's sort of a a, a U-shape um, upside down um, so that you can see that there was a prevalence of uh, high life satisfaction about 33% there and then there was a, an increase and then a decrease and that same pattern in Iceland. And both in Iceland and Sweden you can see that the development goes on in all age groups. But the interesting pattern here is that look at the boys and girls that they're actually the 15 year olds are much closer together here, the 13-year-olds and the 11-year-olds. Uh, so we see, we don't see very many gender differences, but we see strong age differences here over time. And again, in Sweden, the same pattern for all age groups. Um, so it's, it's the whole sort of youth population that drives this uh, change, although the prevalence differences are very, very large among the different age groups. Life satisfaction declines in Finland and Denmark over time. And again, as an example for Finland, you can see that the decline goes on in all age groups. And also in Finland, you see that the, the boys and girls are closer together and the age differences are much larger than the gender differences, which is opposite to what we saw when we looked at symptoms. Again, Norway, the only good story here is Norway. And the increase in Norway seemed to be going on in almost all groups, some patterns here for the boys, but when we look from 2002 to 2014, there has been an increase in life satisfaction, in high life satisfaction prevalence in, uh, in all age and gender groups in Norway. So there is a large variation in prevalence levels of high life satisfaction if we look at the Nordic countries from 28 to 43%. Um, and in, in most of the country, there's a decline in the prevalence at l from 2002 to 2014. And Norway, again, is the only country that shows a positive development from 2002 to 2014. Strong association with age, almost double the prevalence among the uh, youngest compared to the oldest, and uh, a strong association with, with sex, but much less than uh, so for symptoms. Then we'll talk about some of the things that are associated with these health and, and uh, mental, mental health outcomes. And some of the issues that we are looking at always is the school. School and family are the ones that we have some indicators on. And we've been looking at one of the indicators here, which is called feel pressured by schoolwork. We ask the kids whether they feel pressured by their schoolwork. And they can say not at all, a little, some, or a lot. And then we combine the group some and a lot. And these are results. Very different prevalences uh, for different countries. You see that Iceland and Finland are on the top. They have much higher uh, prevalence of uh, feeling pressured by schoolwork. And you have Sweden at the bottom, especially in the last uh, three rounds. For Finland and Iceland, um, you see uh, that, the, uh, that the development is approximately the same, but the groups that have the, the highest uh, prevalence of uh, feeling pressured by schoolwork is the oldest children as we would expect. So you see the age differences here are strong, but there's also a strong gender gap, gap between 15 year old boys and girls. And you see the development that we saw overall in the, co in the countries driven by uh, the, the oldest age groups. And in Iceland, again, the changes driven by the oldest age groups, the, the increase we see in the 2014 is driven both ma mainly by the oldest age groups. So the oldest age groups are increasingly feeling pressured by schoolwork. In the other countries it looks, goes a bit up and down, but um, in Norway the pattern we see here is that actually feeling pressured by schoolwork goes down for 11 year or for 15 year old boys but it increases for 15-year-old girls. So most of the groups in Norway are either without development or actually a decline in, um, 
in, in pressure by schoolwork, but the 15-year-old girls have a decrease. So notable country differences, Finland and Iceland are in the top. Much more kids in those countries feel pressured by schoolwork. And in Iceland, Finland and Denmark, we see an increase in perceived school pressure by schoolwork. Sweden shows a decreasing trend. And in Norway, um, the level of pressure by school uh, schoolwork was stable. And age is an important uh, uh, factor. And uh, school pressure increased over time, especially for the 13 and 15 year olds. So something really changed in their uh, perception of uh, what the school does to their uh, daily life. The other uh, indicator, the last indicator I want to show you is from the family. We've asked about uh, parental communication and uh, instead of showing you three, four different measures on that, I've chosen to take the one measure that calls, uh, that, uh, that's called easy to talk to father. We asked them how easy is it to talk to your mother about things that really bother you or how easy is it to talk to your father about things that really bother you and then they can uh, answer from very easy to very difficult and we studied the group that answered either easy or very easy to communicate with father. This is a good story for all of us. It actually increases in all the countries from 2002 to 2014 and quite large increases in some of the countries. Sweden is a country where the development is the, uh, the least sort of uh, spectacular. Um, and you can see here that there's not much going on in some age groups, but actually that those who have the highest sort of, uh, or the lowest prevalence of feeling, uh, finding it easy to talk to their father has found an increase from 2010 to 2014. So a small positive development there um, among the girls that are the lowest sort of uh, in prevalence. And in all the other countries, it looks really nice when we look at the overall picture. All four countries seem to have more than or have more than 10% prevalence improvement over those 12 years. So they improved from 50 or 60% to 60 and 70%, uh, which is a good story. And it goes on in all age groups. You can see both boys and girls. Uh, you see very large gender differences uh, and, and also some age differences, especially, again, the 15-year-old girls have the hardest time in finding it easy to talk to their father. But there's an improvement in all age groups driving the, the good story in Finland. And it's the same in all the other countries. So we find that in every Nordic country, the ease of communication with fathers has actually increased from 2002 to 2014, although in Sweden it's a small increase. And there's a strong association by age, and the younger children find it easier to talk to their father. And in all age group, more boys find it easy to talk to their father, while the gender difference when we look at talk to mother are very small, but still the girls find it easier to talk to their mother. So, the story of this uh, very uh, large number of tables that I hope you could follow me going around is that, that if we look at the development in mental health in those, um, those uh, indicators that we've been looking at from 2002 to 2014, we can say that from Finland and Denmark, that all changes over the period left an increased, increasing level of adverse outcome. That means more symptoms, more kids with symptoms, more kids who had sleep difficulties, uh, and a decreasing prevalence level of positive indicators, especially life satisfaction, decreased a lot in those countries. In Iceland, there was an interesting U-shaped development for very many of the indicators, for health complaints, for di sleep difficulties, and, and an opposite uh, U-shape for life satisfaction, where the best outcomes were in 2010, um, just after the, the re large recession in, in Iceland, as seen in, in the adult data as well. And in Sweden, a U-shaped development for some indicators, but overall a negative development for symptoms, sleep, self-rated health, and life satisfaction. And Norway has the positive development from 2002 to 2014 on all indicators. They have a higher prevalence of the positive indicators. They have a decreasing level, level of the adverse outcomes in most groups not only uh, in the 15-year-old girls. 
And overall, when we look at, at pressure by schoolwork, we can't find a very strong association uh, with, with the developments that we've seen in the, some of the others. We can see that in Denmark, Finland and Iceland, pressure by schoolwork increased. In Norway, it was stable. In Sweden, it was decreasing. And in Denmark, Finland, Iceland and Norway, uh, and especially for 13 and 15 year old girls in Sweden, we saw an increase in adolescents who found it easy to talk to their father. So that's overall positive development. And for all outcomes, we found that prevalence level vary very much within countries, uh, much more than so more so than between countries. And for most indicators, age showed a very very large uh, variation. So all in all, the conclusion for our work is that Norway is the only country in the Nordic country that actually has had a positive development on all indicators. Um, all other countries' mental health indicators, as we see them, have been decreasing and declining from 2002 to 2014. Thank you.